Gars Pulsena of Clusium, by the nine gods he swore that the great house of Tarquin should suffer wrong no more. By the nine gods he swore it, and named a trysting day, and bade his messengers ride forth east and west and south and north to summon his array. East and west and south and north the messengers ride fast, and tower and town and cottage have heard the trumpet's blast. Shame on the false Etruscan who lingers in his home when Porcina of Clusium is on the march for Rome. The horsemen and the footmen are pouring in a main from many a stately marketplace, from many a fruitful plain. From many a lonely hamlet which, hid by beech and pine, like an eagle's nest, hangs on the crest of purple Apennine. And now hath every city sent up her tale of men. The foot are fourscore thousand, the horse a thousand's ten. Before the gates of Sutrium is met the great array. A proud man was Lars Porcina. Upon the trysting day. But by the yellow Tiber was tumult and affright from all the spacious champaign. To Rome men took their flight. A mile around the city the throng stopped up the ways. A fearful sight it was to see through two long nights and days. Now, from the rock Tarpeian, could the wan burgers spy the line of blazing villages red in the midnight sky. The fathers of the city, they sat all night and day, for every hour some horsemen came with tidings of dismay. To eastward and to westward have spread the Tuscan bands, nor house, nor fence, nor dovecote in Crustumerium stands. For Benna down to Ostia have wasted all the plain. Aster have stormed Janiculum, and the stout guards are slain. I wis in all the Senate there was no heart so bold, but saw it ached and fast it beat when that ill news was told. Forthwith up rose the consul, up rose the fathers all. In haste they girded up their gowns and hied them to the wall. They held a council, standing before the river gate. Short time was there, ye well may guess, for musing or debate. Out spake the council roundly, The bridge must straight go down, For since Janiculum is lost, Nought else can save the town. Just then, a scout came flying all wild with haste and fear. To arms, to arms, Sir Consul, Lars Porcina is here. On the low hills to westward, the Consul fixed his eye and saw the swarthy storm of dust rise fast along the sky. And nearer fast and nearer doth the red whirlwind come. And louder still, and still more loud, from underneath that rolling cloud is heard the trumpet's war note proud, the trembling and the hum. And plainly, and more plainly, now through the gloom appears, far to left and far to right, in broken gleams of dark blue light, the long array of helmets bright, the long array of spears. Fast by the royal standard, o'erlooking all the war, Lars Porcina of Clusium sat in his ivory car. By the right will rode Mamilius, prince of the Latian name, and by the left full Sextus that wrought the deed of shame. But when the face of Sextus was seen among the foes, a yell that rent the firmament from all the town arose. On the housetops was no woman but spat towards him and hissed. No child but screamed out curses and shook its little fist. 
but the consul's brow was sad, and the consul's speech was low, and darkly looked he at the wall, and darkly at the foe. Their van will be upon us before the bridge goes down, and if they once may win the bridge, what hope to save the town? Then out spake brave Horatius, the captain of the gate. To every man upon this earth, death cometh soon or late. And how can man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers and the temples of his gods? And for the tender mother who dandled him to rest, and for the wife who nurses his baby at her breast, and for the holy maidens who feed the eternal flame to save them from for Sextus that wrought the deed of shame. Hew down the bridge, Sir Consul, with all the speed ye may. I, with two more to help me, will hold the foe in play. In yon straight path a thousand may well be stopped by three. Now who will stand on either hand and keep the bridge with me? Then out spake Spurius Lartius. A Ramnian proud was he. Lo, I will stand at thy right hand, and keep the bridge with thee. And out spake strong Herminius, of Titian blood was he. I will abide on the left side, and keep the bridge with thee. Uh, Horatius, quoth the consul, as thou sayest so, let it be. And straight against that great array forth went the dauntless three. For Romans in Rome's quarrel spared neither land nor gold, nor son nor wife nor limb nor life in the brave days of old. Now while the three were tightening their harness on their backs, the consul was the foremost man to take in hand an axe, and fathers mixed with commons seized hatchet, bar, and crow, and smote upon the planks above and loose to the props below. Meanwhile, the Tuscan army, right glorious to behold, came flashing back the noonday light, rank behind rank, like surges bright of a broad sea of gold. Four hundred trumpets sounded, a peal of warlike glee as that great host with measured tread and spears advance and ensign spread rolled slowly towards the bridge's head where stood the dauntless three. The three stood calm and silent and looked upon the foes and a great shout of laughter from all the vanguard rose and forth three chiefs came spurring before that deep array to earth they sprang, their swords they drew, and lifted high their shields, and flew to win the narrow way. Aunus from green Tifernum, lord of the hill of vines, and Saeus, whose eight hundred slaves sicken in Ilva's mines, and Picus, long to Clutium, vassal in peace and war, who led to fight his Umbrian powers from that grey crag where, girt with towers, the fortress of Nequinum lowers o'er the pow waves of Nar. Stout Latius hurled down Aunus into the stream beneath. Herminius struck at Saeus and clove him to the teeth. And Picus' brave Horatius darted one fiery thrust. And the proud Umbrian's gilded arms clashed in the bloody dust. And now no sound of laughter was heard among the foes. A wild and wrathful clamour from all the vanguard rose. Six spears lengths from the entrance halted that deep array. And for a space no man came forth to win the narrow way. But hark! The cry is Asda! And lo, the ranks divide. And the great lord of Luna comes with his stately stride. Upon his ample shoulder clangs loud the fourfold shield. In his hand he shakes the brand which none but he can wield. He smiled on those bold Romans, a smile serene and high. He eyed the flinching Tuscans, and scorn was in his eye. 
quoth he, the she-wolf's litter stands savagely at bay, but will ye dare to follow if Aster clears the way? Then whirling up his broadsword, with both hands to the height, he rushed against Horatius and smote with all his might. With shield and blade Horatius right deftly turned the blow. The blow, though turned, came yet too nigh. It missed his helm, but gashed his thigh. The Tuscans raised a joyful cry to see the red blood flow. He reeled, and on Herminius he leaned one breathing space. Then, like a wildcat mad with wounds, sprang right at Aster's face. Through teeth and skull and helmet, so fierce a thrust he spread, the good sword stood a handbreadth out behind the Tuscan's head. And the great lord of Luna fell at that deadly stroke, as falls on mountain Alvernus a thunder-smitten oak. Far o'er the crushing forest the giant arms lie spread, and the power algas muttering low gaze on the blasted head. On Aster's throat Horatius right firmly pressed his heel, and thrice and four times tugged the mane ere he wrenched out the steel. And see, he cried, the welcome fair guest that waits you here. What noble Lucomo comes next to taste our Roman cheer. But at his haughty challenge, a sullen murmur ran, mingled of wrath and shame and dread along that glittering van. There lacked not men of prowess, nor men of lordly race, for all Etruria's noblest were round the fatal place. But all Etruria's noblest felt their hearts sink to see on the earth the bloody corpses in the path the dauntless three. And from the ghastly entrance where those bold Romans stood, all shrank like boys who, unaware, ranging the woods to start a hare, come to the mouth of the dark lair where, growling low, a fierce old bear lies amidst bones and blood. Was none who would be foremost to lead such dire attack but those behind cried forward, and those before cried back. And backward now and forward wavers the deep array. And on the tossing sea of steel to and fro the standards reel, and the victorious trumpet peal dies fitfully away. But meanwhile, axe and lever have manfully been plied, and now the bridge hangs tottering above the boiling tide. Come back, come back, Horatius, loud cried the fathers all. Back, Latius, back, Herminius, back ere the ruin fall. Back darted Spurius Latius, Herminius darted back, and as they passed beneath their feet, they felt the timbers crack. But when they turned their faces, and on the farther shore saw brave Horatius stand alone. They would have crossed once more, but with a crash like thunder fell every loosened beam, and like a dam the mighty wreck lay right athwart the stream. And a long shout of triumph rose from the walls of Rome, as to the highest turret tops was splashed the yellow foam. And like a horse unbroken, when first he feels the rain, the furious river struggled hard and tossed his tawny mane, and burst the curb and bounded, rejoicing to be free, and whirling down in fierce career, battlement and plank and pier rushed headlong to the sea. Alone stood brave Horatius, but constant still in mind, thrice thirty thousand bows before and the broad flood behind, down with him, cried false Sextus, with a smile on his pale face. Now yield thee, cried Lars Porcina, now yield thee to our grace. Round turned he, as not deigning those craven ranks to see. Nought spake he to Lars Porcina, to Sextus nought spake he. But he saw on Palatinus the white porch of his home, 
and he spake to the noble river that rolls by the towers of Rome. O oh, Tiber, Father Tiber, to whom the Romans pray, a Roman's life, a Roman's arms, take thou in charge this day. So he spake, and speaking sheathed the good sword by his side, and with his harness on his back, plunged headlong in the tide. No sound of joy or sorrow was heard from either bank, but friends and foes in dumb surprise, with parted lips and straining eyes, stood gazing where he sank. And when above the surges they saw his crest appear, all Rome sent forth a rapturous cry, and even the ranks of Tuscany could scarce forbear to cheer. But fiercely ran the current, swollen high by months of rain, and fast his blood was flowing, and he was sore in pain. And heavy with his armour, and spent with changing blows, and off they thought him sinking, but still again he rose. Never, I ween, did swimmer in such an evil case struggle through such a raging flood, safe to the landing place. But his limbs were borne up bravely by the brave heart within, and our good father Tiber bare bravely up his chin. Curse on him, quoth false Sextus. Will not the villain drown? But for this day, ere close of day, we should have sucked the town. Heaven help him, quoth Lars Porcina, and bring him safe to shore, for such a gallant feat of arms was never seen before. And now he fills the bottom, now on dry earth he stands. Now round him throng the fathers to press his gory hands. And now with shouts and clapping, a noise of weeping loud, he enters through the river gate, borne by the joyous crowd. And still his name sounds stirring unto the men of Rome, as the trumpet blast that cries to them to charge the Vulcan home. And wives still pray to Juno for boys with hearts as bold as his who kept the bridge so well in the brave days of old.